Zoro, the gay blade. No, no, that's not a mistake. That's the name of the movie. 1981, Zorro the Gay Blade, directed by Peter Madak, screenplay by Justin McCauley. Writers Hal Dressner and Greg Holt. <laughs> Five million in the box office. Is that good or bad? I don't know. <laughs> you gotta put inflation on that shit. <laughs> yeah. You know the people that came out to watch this just came out of, like, Naked Gun, yeah. um, Three Amigos, Blazing Saddles, 1981, Airplane Damn. of the 70s. So you do casting? Yeah, you do that. Go ahead. So the lead character, George Hamilton, plays three characters in this? We'll get to that. Laura Hutton, uh, Charlotte Taylor Wilson, Brenda Vaccaro plays Florinda. The Probably the highlight of this movie for me, Rob, Rob Lieberman plays es- yeah. Esteban. Donovan Scott plays Paco, who also st- sold some steams. And uh, anyone else noteworthy? No. There's not. Not a lot of talking roles for side characters in this. No. Unless they said, no. your name's Zero? Or whoever Eyepatch was, maybe laugh a couple times. Too. Yes, that's... Uh... Boof! <laughs> it's boof. How do, how, how do we begin this? Because this is probably not a movie that would... <sighs> This is tough. It's so yeah. It's from the eighty. It's from eighty one. I watched this movie when I was a kid with my older brother. Like we were like so. I guess we found it, saw it. Found it. We saw it on TV like in the early to mid nineties. Right. And we thought it was the funniest fucking thing. I wonder ever. what they would have edited out. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I remember the fruitcake scene because yeah. we used to quote that. We go fruitcake. Fruit cake. Yeah. That yeah. Was pretty funny. And yeah. Sissy. We said sissy a lot, but I don't know if that's offensive by today's standards. But anyways, Z- Zorro. Well, t- to talk about what happens and Zoro dies, but leaves a note to his son. His strange son. Yeah, about taking up the mantle. Also his strange son. <laughs> strange and strange yes. and very arrogant. Well, uh, very orange. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. The, the, is, <laughs> <coughs> Again, the incomparable George Hamilton. If you know nothing about this man, he has spent a lifetime with bronzer and tanning himself to the peak levels of orangeness. <laughs> I can't remember which roast he's in. He's very did. orange in this one. Yeah, I think he might be in the Donald Trump roast. Oh, really? But they go at him for, again, being essentially just That's a, funny, an yeah. orange man. Um, but yeah, he uh, he takes up the mantle of Zorro, ends up breaking his ankle, or spraining his ankle, and he has a twin, bro- uh, tw- identical twin brother. Oh, so you're just jumping all over No, him. this is the story okay. that, takes up the, that takes over for him. Yes, as he's feeling his ankle. Yeah, makes that's sense. That. Makes sense. That's the story. Essentially, yes. <laughs> Trying to be Zoro, and he finds out he's Zoro based on like a costume party. It's like how what are they gonna dress up like a bullfighter, uh, a matador? It's the we, same thing. He, we, we we were talking before about the first big laugh. Yes. Do you want to know what my first big laugh is, or do you want me to go through like the story till we got to the first big laugh? Because I like pa- Paco and his sign language, funny, but I didn't laugh at that. Um, the goons that like break into his whole, like his room. Yeah. That all have swords and no guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny, stupid, but I was like, none of you guys have guns. Right. Um, but didn't laugh. No. I just noticed that this was literally the. I best. wonder if we have the same. I'm asking because I want to know if we have the same. I, mean, yeah, I, had, a, I had a very big laugh. At it, the beginning. It, 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 it probably is. You definitely laughed at what I laughed too. Um, I just I I wrote a comment that this is probably the best era for mustaches because there were some amazing Fantastic. mustaches on Mustachios. it. Mustachios. Um, and then. Uh, Esteban and his terrible accent. <laughs> Funny, but not my first laugh. Show. He steals the show. He does. He's he's probably the MVP <laughs> of this. My first laugh is when he, um, Diego rides into wherever Esteban lives, like this new, like San yeah. Diego or Los Los Angeles, right? Uh, the birthplace of California. Yeah, yeah. He says that. That's a funny line. But Alta like, California. Yeah. And Esteban tells Diego, um, "Your your dad died. He was frightened by a horse, by a turtle." I laughed at that, and then they, they said the title was executed. I laughed so hard at that. I laughed so hard at that. That was my hardest first laugh. I was like, this was too late in this movie. Like, I wish you front-loaded that. And then, like, like, him getting a letter. It's like, you have to see Esteban. And it's like, Esteban, I'm here. It's like, your horse died. I mean, your father died. How? He fell off his horse. How? A turtle scared him. You executed the turtle. <laughs> see, I, I love the... Actually, so I, yours was before mine. Okay, fair enough. It was Paco as a bear. <laughs> That's late. Yeah. That's that, super late. I erupted. That's super You know what happens before... Yeah, but I laughed the whole time. As soon as he came out, I was like, which came before... Which came first? This or Spaceballs? 
probably this. This, I think. Because Pac- Space was 80. Right around the time. It's definitely 80s, right? Because Paco- that was Mel Brooks' Because la- Paco kind of looks like Barf. And, <laughs> yeah. and then obviously, Candy, I, got, yeah. I got some Chewbacca off of him because Zoro's Han in this. But he comes out and then I was like, this is totally Barf. Because he, he makes fun of like, you're a bear, but you look like a dog. Yeah, Space was 87. So this okay, is six this is years for, prior. So Mel Brooks to... is like, the one good joke in this, I'm taking it. Yeah. We need a side character. But... When they, so they had the costume party, he dressed up like a bear. His, <laughs> his sidekick, Paco, dressed up like a bear. And I was dying, like him riding on the horse and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Strong dude. But you didn't even laugh at the old lady. So like there's a caretaker in the house that they're staying at. And she comes in with a giant casket. Oh, no, you're right. And yeah, she's that was walking hilarious. around with that. Yeah. And like, as he's just like having a monologue to himself. Look, I wrote that right after. So maybe that was, maybe I just wrote this out of. You just wanted to talk about the bear. The bear yeah, Paco's a bear. Old lady carrying the coffin up the stairs. He's like, oh, thank you. Just put it anywhere. Oh, put it over there. there. And she gets over <laughs> like, that uh, window. Oh, put it on that side of the window. Like, she's, like, like just struggling with this giant cat yeah, it's, it's on her massive. back. Yeah, it's, it's huge. And it's full. It's kind she's of... like a piano mover. It's like she had a piano <laughs> on her back. It's it's a good, like, gag. It's a good sight gag. But, like, this movie is either short of sight gags or either short of, like, punched up writing that it couldn't have been compared to, like, Mel Brooks or, like, Steve Martin... Martin Short, Chevy Chase in their prime with three I think, it, yeah, if, if they had had, yeah, if they had had, um... Anybody from maybe National Magic, Lampoon, yeah, or, this movie would have gone over there. anyone yeah. who works with Mel Brooks, you guys could have been... Because it's, been it's funny, but it's not a, yeah, it's not a classic. To just push you over? Because they could have kept pushing the envelope with the gay, and there's not really a lot of, like, overtly gay things. The gay thing's pretty tame in this. Yeah. For a movie that called the gay blade the gay blade and to that and that's to maybe, be fair that's one of the biggest complaints is like gay blade doesn't happen until halfway through the movie right his brother doesn't take over until uh yeah quite a little i did laugh when esteban is talking to the people and he's like i will have the, my weight in gold and everyone's like your weight he's like and he points to the fat guy and he's like no, no his weight in gold like, <laughs> the fat joke always hits or the or the know. fact that nobody every time uh zoro makes the letters yeah is that yeah, nobody knows what it like, is uh, is that a two, a two? Like, no 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 <laughs> that was a good run that, on. yeah that's how we learn that's how i learned that my child has learned to say two he's like no it's a z so there's, he has a there's another character here even uh, Patch calls him zero yeah zero, yeah. <laughs> zero. yeah yeah there's a, there's a character here uh we're talking about the great um Esteban, or he becomes the alcalde. This is Rob is the Lieberman. Mayor. The Rob Lieberman that right, yeah. He, uh, his whole thing is he's a childhood friend with of of uh, Zorro, right? Right. Yep. They grew up together, or whatever, and he's now they're at odds. Right. And he becomes the mayor, the alcalde. Mm-hmm. So he's in power, and he's like the big bad. In the movie, yeah, he's the sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, whatever mob boss in Gotham, whatever the Lex Luthor, he's just the power corrupted, but still has ties to his old friend. Right, and then Zoro shows up in his town. Right, and he hates it. He instantly, well, he like, because like, he he rules with an iron fist. We're know? we're skipping over the first time that Zoro appears, obviously. At the party. And, and essentially, well. I want to skip over that to like get to like the tax where he fights Eye Patch. Oh, the tax fight. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so like he dresses up thinking like it's just a costume. There's the we'll go back to the ball, but like he's out in the field, and like one of these farmers gets robbed by Eye Patch dude, and he chases him down, and like he wins the the sword fight, but uh then Zoro's like, do you not recognize the great mark of do not recognize the mark of great Zoro, and then the Eye Patch looks up at like the tree and like lifts his eye patch. Like, yeah. yeah, I love it. Right. Yeah. Like, the way he delivers it, like. <laughs> It was so like dead. Yeah, he's, he's good at this. Yeah, that made me laugh. There's a lot of moments like that. I was like, I wish there was more of it. Um, and then when they finally go to the party, they let Zoro through, and then the guards are like, "Where's your invitation, Senor Beaver?" <laughs> I, I laugh and laugh. Like, That's good. They get into the sword fight, and they had they hand the the. So Alcalde's wife like is infatuated with Zoro, right. and uh, when they get to a sword fight at the ball. They hand over their their sheaths or whatever. Right. To her. She takes Zoro. It's like hold this place. She's like absolutely. And Alcalde's like hold it please. And she doesn't even move. And it like flows by. Uh, I love that. That, uh, that got me good. I think Eye Patch. I wish I remembered his name, but it doesn't matter because Eye Patch is Eye Patch. He Tax man. Asked about like Esteban what's going on with Zoro, and Esteban's picking a flower, and he just starts tearing off all the leaves of it. Like he's so angry, he just starts ripping it off. I was like, and there's like a few like flower gangs, right? So like again. I wish this had the kind of speed of like a Mel Brooks or like a Robin Williams or yeah. Car- where they yeah. just keep hitting you like yeah. they pound at home or a Fairly Brothers where if you don't laugh at the first one, you're definitely going to be laugh at the last one because yeah. you've seen it so many times. Um, 
the joke about Al Caldi and his wife only fucking 12 times a year. Yeah. But it's in one night. And he's, and he's like, wait, what, what do you guys eat? Oysters? Or not eggs? Yeah, yeah. And wait, I have a quote. He's like, a lot of garlic. <laughs> and then she has the great line. It's like, she's so in love with Diego. But she's like, why didn't I marry you? And he's probably like, because I didn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love those lines. It's so man. dry and it's so perfect. Um, Throughout the, throughout the movie, Al Caldi keeps coming close to figuring out that his friend is is Zoro. Zoro. We didn't talk about Don Diego. There's there's like three major fight scenes. The first one's in the costume book. Yep. That was actually like a good fight yeah, scene. Yeah, choreography's good. And then it ends with him escaping out the window and he and jumps down. Yeah. He cuts his foot. Oh pants. that's right, that's how he breaks his foot. We skipped that. And then, yeah. like he jumps down and he's like, ah shit. And like yeah. it was just a little like swear, but it made me laugh so hard and he limps off. They look they see him limping. So yeah, they know they... that Zoro broke his or hurt his ankle. And right? that's and like the, the villains were actually um smart in this film right like yeah. they they were basically onto him the only problem was like he was smart enough to be like i have a twin brother yeah. like they would have caught this guy yeah so many times yeah which and, is great yeah uh the part where he's laying in the bed right after the ball <laughs> he's laying in the bed with his foot all, all murked and alcali's wife comes to him right because she's horny he locks her away into a like the back into the casket. Back yeah. of the casket when Alcalde comes in to look for her. Which is a dead giveaway because in the back of the casket is the picture of Zoro yeah. and like the wanted poster. Yeah. So like a maid could be like, oh, what so, the hell? So you're Zoro, eh, Diego? But he, he Alcalde comes in and and Don Diego's like, he's like, oh, who? What did uh, what did this Zoro look like? He's like, it's about your height. <laughs> your weight. About your yeah, weight. He taps him. Your weight. You know about. Your stature. He was walking, jumping, and like the. So I do that walking, with my, running, and jumping. I do that with my with my kid in now. Place. Oh, do you? I, I showed her that. I showed her the clip of the walking and running and jumping in place, and walking and jumping and running in place, so and walking like, and jumping. He and keeps running. getting him to imitate what yeah. he, Esteban is doing in order for him to for Esteban to try and figure out if Diego is actually in fact Zoro. Yeah. But the sequence is so funny because he's like so on the money. He just for the reason decides not to believe his instincts. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird. So so in case you didn't understand what the hell we were talking about, he he forces him to come. He forces Don Diego to come out of bed to <laughs> to prove that his foot's not hurt and makes him walk and jump and run in space in place. To the point they start a little dance of walking and running and jumping in place. place. Walking and running and jumping. In. Like they're they're yeah. they're literally best friends because they're both having fun doing yeah. this. Yeah. Like Esteban essentially forgets that he's looking for this dude. That... And then he starts yelling. <laughs> yeah. And that's why they get to say Esteban only works in two voice settings. Either it's like Soft. normal. Or like, yeah, nah, nah. and like his hands are always in the air screaming or something. It's so good. Yeah. Like, it's so good. It sucks the fact that like we keep under undercutting the fact that like these are all white people in what should be uh, yeah they're, they're Hispanic all, roles. Yes. And George Hamilton's Hispanic accent is blatantly oh, bad. Oh, it's so... Like it's it's completely every stereotype you've ever heard of. What were the jo- I can't remember the jokes at the beginning when he's talking to the to um what's his name the lead girl lead lady um, like oh I'm, he's like he's butchering words <laughs> i was like oh yeah you oh but he has a great line though actually we'll get to that so you're talking about charlotte taylor Wilson. charlotte yes yes, yes. Charlotte she, gets, Winston. she gets introduced into the story as she's a missionary yeah she's coming to bring the revolution and kind of the people back into power um and she shows up in this like a, like this gorgeous purple dress and like it's a great scene because everyone else is just wearing like tan colors and like yeah she pops salt and brand and it's like she just like pops out right so when Diego sees her it's clearly like uh love at first and he's so cocky and she's, about and it, she's yeah. lit so nicely too right yeah. like she's like soft eyes and everything but uh she has he has this line she she like gets up on a like a platform to talk about like I'm here to save the people and in the corner you see like little children go under her dress to look up of it. I laugh so hard. And then she's like, I'm here to save you all from the greedy see, blood suckers. And he's like, Well, I am one of the greedy blood suckers, right? See, but that, and that's what you were talking about the, the, when you talk about Mel Brooks. Yeah. He has more background activity going There'd on. There'd be so like, many jokes like packed that. in. Yeah. Um, she he keeps saying like, You're not from here because you smell like ships in the field. And like, she's like that's what it was. She's there's like there's ships in the field. She's like yeah, ships that go ba ba. It's like oh sheeps. sheeps yeah. Like, that's what I said. Ships. The amazing line that he says is. Uh, she says something like, you have an accent, and I can't understand you. She's like, telling the people that have accents when they don't, that's the most underrated line ever, because how many, I guess we'll say, travelers or conquerors or people that have gone to another country have shown up and been like, 
you're different. Yeah. When actuality, they're the ones the, that stand yeah. out. You're the so outcast. Yeah. I felt like that was such like a low key comment that not a lot of people were picking up on. And then she, again, that, that just, she's a smoke show in that dress. Yeah, and so another the other scene where Alcalde thinks he's, he was the one poster up, right? Of Zorro, and then he's with <laughs> he's with Don Diego, and he's like, "I hate to say it, friend, it looks like you." <laughs> and it's the second it's the second time when he's trying to catch him. And he puts he puts a little he puts thing a little, the, the head, scarf over the his scarf face. Over his face. Like, kind of. I like when he goes. He goes. Who does this remind you of? He goes Zorro. Of course it's Zorro. <laughs> <laughs> and again, he makes him talk like. He's going to say something like yeah. a sissy boy? Yeah. Something like a sissy boy. You know what I mean. He's the guy. And so he makes him, like, do all these, like, fl- flamboyant things, like, wave his arms. He's and like, shake, shake yeah. his hips. And, and they are not the bad, evil alcalde. <laughs> <laughs> We're all over the place, but so is this movie. There's, yeah, it's there's all over the place. There's a, like, there's certain the stories that irrelevant. don't make sense. Yeah. Well, there's a certain point where there's all of a sudden a slave montage where it talks about, like, like there's workers in the field and there's, like, yeah. a slave mine. But, like, there was no dialogue or anything to say, like, this is the actual story. Like, we want to rescue and liberate these kids from the right the slave mines. And so it's funny if you watch The Mask of Zorro, because that's a pivotal um, story plot. Where the... Almost everything Zorro is, like, him releasing people from mines. Right. That's sl- slaves from mines. It I happens. Guess, yeah. It's, like, in a lot of books. <laughs> I, I guess that, that's, that's what happened that, That's then. what's going on. Yeah, right? fair enough. So we get introduced to Whiteface... Uh, George Hamilton, and I wrote somewhere Ben Stiller is taking notes. Bunny Wigglesworth. Eventually he will don whiteface. Yeah. You know, but better. Um, and then his British brother, all of a sudden, who came from, I guess, Britain? Or like a ship? No, no, he was... So this is... It's actually a really funny backstory. I laugh pretty good at this. Okay. Uh, they were... They raised... They're they from Alta, California, but he was sent away to join the Navy to learn how to be a man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. So while he was away, he adopted, like, the English accent and all this right. shit and, and the, changed his name to Bunny Wigglesworth. And he's coming in, like, again, like a painted white face. Oh, the, it's like a, it looks like the, a doll. The Baroque wigs. Yeah. Well, he's got, a, like, a Navy uniform on. And he's galloping in. And I also wrote somewhere um, the writer of Man in the Iron Mask is taking notes. Because that's basically <laughs> the same story as well. Uh, but finally we get into the gay blade of the movie. Yeah, and he... We're, so, we're halfway through when it finally happens. And he actually... He's very effective in what he's doing. He, right. he carries out the medley. He's he's giving the... Because the people are getting taxed to to high heaven, right? It's Robin Hood. Yeah, it's Robin Hood. And he's coming oh, to Robin take Hood the money Zorro, back. Yeah. Sisters. He's coming to take, them, take the money and get them back to the people. Excuse me. Which is the actual story in this. Except he's doing it in he's doing it in Zorro's costume in a, such a flamboyant, amazing way. He's he uses like, a whip instead of a sword, and correct. he's in different colors. Now the first time we see him, he literally looks like a plum purple velvet <laughs> prince looking motherfucker Zorro. Yeah. And I said somewhere Sim, Sim, Simpsons is making notes about Scarlet <laughs> Pimpernel. Yeah. Um, but I again, I want to know who his tailor is because yeah. this this transformation it's, from all black to like he's even got the little pur- tassels on yeah, his little tassels hat, on the hat yeah. which made me laugh so hard because he's shaking. And his whip, his whip work is so amazing. Oh, his whip game's on point. That not only does he slash a Z into a concrete wall, he slashes in Zorro, yeah. and it's just like slash, 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 and you get all five letters, <laughs> and I laugh so hard. It was great. So yeah, he wears orange, he wears plum, he wears a whole scene about like right all the all his tax man coming back to tell Alcalde what he's what maybe colors he's maybe worn. maybe the greatest scene. That's the best scene in the movie. Maybe. I, and I'll be using that for this at the end of this. Because he, he wore a foot. The back and yeah. forth between. Oh, my um, God. He's like, yes, he was. So it's first eye patch. Was, eye patch is like, he, was, he wore a he, plum. He wore a plum. He's like, purple like a plum. And then you hear Esteban like, ah, ha. I think he's trying to tell me something. And then another uh, guard comes in. He's like, <laughs> he was just yellow like a banana. And you're like, ah. <laughs> ah! Red like a rose or red like a radish? <laughs> it's like, like, like a rose. It's like, he's just like lime, like an avocado. Is that the fruit? Yes, or a vegetable. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> it's a vegetable. So we have two fruits, one vegetable, and one flower. Yeah. What is he trying and to it, tell and me? it makes no fucking oh sense. Oh my god. It makes no sense whatsoever, but it's hilarious. And again, it's something like this little scene, in any, like in a like a comedic genius's hands, yeah. would have gone so much further. To the point of like maybe you would have saw the fruit of the loom um characters in the background like maybe he wants underwear um then that you see a sign of like uh what they're posting up i guess what he's 
the the letters that he's knocking on the doors. Yep. Um, it says El Zorro returns, pledges peasant sorry pledges peasants protection, color for costumes, captivate crowd. Alcade angry, Don's disgusted, so I guess it's like their news. <laughs> like how they go door to door. But I just love that it said colorful, yeah. <laughs> colorful costume captivates crowd. <laughs> Alliteration, so, <laughs> perfect alliteration. Just killing it. So, and we get the Rainbow Zoro montage, yeah. which is just like Technicolor, yeah. just him in different outfits. Yeah. Again, who the fuck is his tailor? Yeah, because this dude is on point. Like game. Ready from to go. boots yeah. to like mask to hat, like everything. To tassels to, every, to yeah. everything matches. It's amazing. Not much else happens after that. Kind of. I laughed again when he meets up with Charlotte as a, this is still Bunny. Oh, when she comes on to him. Yeah, yeah. and he's got the flower in his hat too. And she's, and she's like, okay, we already did the sissy boy thing. But uh, she's like, where is it? Oh, we skipped a lot. Because there's that, that scene where Esteban finally catches up with Diego and then he makes him do all the sissy boy stuff. Yeah, we did that. We talked about it. And I asked, like, sissy boy can't fly today, but if he said cis boy, like, I'm a cis gender, yeah, I'm cisgender. like, oh, that's it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Hamilton has pure crazy eyes in this entire movie. The whole movie. He's constantly, like, googly eye, like, freaking out. But yeah. we, we, there's a scene in a graveyard where Diego and Esteban are chasing down a Bunny, who's playing Zorro. Yeah, yeah, they, he sees him at the window. And he, uh, Bunny is dressed as a priest or a padre. A monk, yeah, he's like, and he makes yeah. him pray, and then... They cut to him on Esteban's horse, it's and then so Esteban true. runs. Is like, now you have me and God against you. And then Diego's like, me too. And then you hear uh, Esteban scream up, fruit cake. And I laugh. I laugh pretty hard at that. It was good. Um, another costume ball happens. So clearly they only throw costume balls. Well, this was this was a trick to try and catch Zoro. Okay. Right. Um, and then. And it's a room full of Zoro. Daniel comes dressed as Zoro. It's like, it's like, oh, I thought this was the point. And then he sends all people that. So he gets all these people to dress up like Zoro, <laughs> even like fat and a shape dude. Yes, who and is their the tailor? Who's making all this money on Zoro costumes? Al Qaeda's like, look at these fat guys going like, are you the Zoro? <laughs> like, like, he's the old guy's like, I know you're not the Zoro. Right? Yeah. He's the old, like, like, old, like, decrepit old man. Someone's making so much money. Um, And then Margarita Wigglesworth shows up. That's right, yeah. He's dressed in it's drag, a bunny yeah. dressed in drag, and somewhere Adam Sandler's taking notes for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Jack and Joe. I just love what. Uh, can I call you Wiggy? It's like, sure. I'll tell you something, Wiggy. And he kept trying, like, Esteban keeps calling <laughs> this girl Wiggy. Um, and this was my greatest laugh in the movie. Um, <laughs> you take my breast away. Oops, I didn't mean to say that. And Esteban's smiling. Oh, because yeah, Esteban's wildly attracted to big bunny. For whatever, because that's the trope, right? Like, yeah. every time a dude's dressed up in, uh, like, Tootsie, uh, some like it hot, there's always a dude that loves a dude dressed up in Dre. Yeah. And yeah, it's not funny. It's always, it's funny. It's I mean, funny. I'm pretty sure it's art imitates life because there's a whole generation. No, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. You like it's what just, you like. It's the mistaken identity that's funny. That everyone's like, oh, yeah. now you're a real woman. There's always that line. Yeah. It's like, you're what a woman. Yeah, it's, it's not against women. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Bunny or Margarita makes the, the joke, you take my breast away. And then uh, Esteban gets this look in his eyes like, yeah. But Buddy hits him, or Margarita hits him with a fan so hard that his face is like, ah, and then he has to force a smile and, like, play cool. I laughed. I replayed it, like, six times and sent you a screenshot of, like, his face, and yeah. I would laugh so hard. I like before this, we were talking, your your one-line review was, S1 screams the whole movie. That's, <laughs> that's the movie. He does. That's, that's the movie. <laughs> Going back to where Charlotte comes on to him, um, Charlotte's basically they're in front of like a courtyard. There's a nice little pond. It's very romantic, and she's and she just loves everything that Zora's been doing for the people. That she's like, you can do anything you want with me. And he's like, yes, uh, we can go shopping. <laughs> 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 and that's such a trope. Like the, the, there's always a gay guy that wants to go shopping yeah. with a girl. Like, so like she's literally throwing everything without throwing her panties at him. He's yeah. Like, no, I don't. I don't like. You. And he's yeah, yeah. And she has a line later on. It's like I thought you were two people. I could have sworn there was two of you at the end, right? Apparently, um, Esteban's wife, uh, Florinda, has this amazing necklace that like has all the gold that could have like built roads and hospitals for yeah, people. So and she's wearing it at this party again for the trap. Which is why Bunny's dressed like a like a woman. Like a woman to, to get close to, to steal it. To steal it yeah. um, at some point, it gets stolen. And Esteban and Florinda are looking at each other, and they're like, neck, 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 neck. And they just keep screaming neck because yeah. she's missing her necklace. And yeah. I laughed at that. Um, obviously, Zoro steals a necklace to give to Charlotte, puts it around her neck, 
and this time it's the real Zoro Diego. So he can finally woo her and yeah. be like, no, like let's get it in. Like, um, it's the real one. Let's do it. And uh, that's where Charlotte's like, I could have sworn you were two people. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Um, they make out, obviously. Um, but uh, Diego leaves. And then there's like this, again, him not saying words correctly. He's like, when I come back, we can talk about the virgin. She's like, oh, you mean virgin? He's like, yes. And then, and then like, he runs off into the night. Esteban kind of swoops into pick up Charlotte and is using her as bait. Yes, in the that's, courtyard. That's, this is the big climax. Yeah, yeah he he's going to bait. execute your executor, finger quotes on execute, because he's not really planning to kill him. To try and lure uh, Zoro out. Correct. Which which works. Yes. And Again, then... that harkens somewhere. Um, either these guys were yeah these guys were, were no no these guys were watching Robin Hood the animated cartoon. Because it, remem- it reminds me of oh, when, I love that movie. Good. when Robin Hood as a fox comes in and steals and yeah. hides and he reveals himself. And I was like, it's Robin Hood the whole time. Like, you get that whole, it's it's yeah. been Zara the whole time. He exchanges himself for Charlotte, Charlotte. to be executed. He gets tied up. And uh, there's this one little line where, like, Charlotte's just like, oh, you're doing this, you're doing it for the kids. And it's like, you couldn't say that you love me? Like, this is. <laughs> like, I'm the love of your life and then she says you're the love of my life and then he gets crazy eyes again that's, oh, the, that's yeah. the other yeah. screenshot I sent you yeah. and it looks like he's gonna die and literally like a gold Jesus um, he appears it's his brother Golden Zoro so Golden, golden yeah he shows up in gold yeah Golden and Golden Zoro unlocked and he saves the day he does final thoughts I said something else about something else oh there's that drum gay where um, Esteban is trying to speak to the people, but yeah. like the drummers are like, <laughs> and every time he tries to talk, they just start they the drum roll again, yeah. and he looks at them all angry. I was like, that's a good, that's a good gag, Bye. right? Like this movie is like thirty gags short. Yeah. Of being amazing. Yeah. Because you could have squeezed so much into the. Especially frame. even like we we're saying, even background ones like the Mel Brooks type shit. Yeah. Kids doing stuff in the background, maybe someone like oh, Leslie Nielsen stuff. Remember Leslie Nielsen would walk around with a shovel in the back. And, and, Leslie, and Leslie and Nielsen was a straight man, so if you made. Yeah. Uh, George Hamilton, the straight man, and then you could have some silly ass shit like Paco, well, he... just Paco doing something in the background. And then when he plays Bunny, he gets to be like the funny yes. side character. Yeah. We forgot to say when uh, Bunny shows up, he says two bits, four bits, six bits, a peso, Alfa Zoro, stand up and say so. Like that's his little <laughs> greeting to like swing in. And I tried to tell you, but I said it all wrong. Yeah, like, it's a different voice. You're now. an idiot. And even they have the nice little Z end. Yeah, Z end for the credits. So, so, like, this was so close for being something that I'd be, like, I, I'll be watching this once a year, every year. Yeah, I, no. Yeah. As I do with Blazing Saddles. You see it. As I do with Three Amigos. You, I mean, you see it once, you're good for a good half decade without seeing it again. It's It makes you want this movie to be more. Yeah. It, it, Cause it, we, I, I don't know for you, I, I liked it a lot, but it, it's not a good movie. <laughs> I've never seen it before, and I laughed, but I was like, if you just did these three little things, yeah. either, like... It's not as bad where it can be a cult classic like Troll 2, where it's so terrible you just laugh. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, this is legit And it's funny. so close to being one of those cult classics where you're like, oh, you're putting on Three Amigos? Like, every time, anytime Three Amigos is on TV, I'll sit down and watch it. Yeah. It's so good. It's well-crafted. And it's, those are comedians at their height. Or anything from Mel Brooks, because he's just a Mel Brooks fucking, is amazing. Uh, just a genius. Yeah, Mel Brooks is amazing. So, like, it's, they're so, or it's, it's not Airplane, where it's just like, we're the first of doing this, so we, we can do it anything we want. Because airplane was like seventy, I want to say seventy two, but I know it was seventies. Oh, I think it was seventy seven. Oh, why not? Give me a second. That's fine. Uh, yeah, but it, it's definitely the seventies. But again, they were so close from making it something that would have been lasting. So it's one of those movies that like you can't say is very great, but it's because it's a little bit of a hard watch. But oh, shit. it's uh, airplane's nineteen eighty, so it's way off. <laughs> so I was closer than you. But they're right in that that vein of yep. where comedies were hitting all yep. cylinders. I, I guess this was the bootleg airplane, right? This would have been, yes, this, this would have been, year after airplane. yeah, in, pre, in pre-production, if not yeah. filming while airplane was coming out. But again, could have been so much more. What are you giving it? How many? We're doing bottle caps? Yeah. And we're doing a six pack of bottle caps? Is that what we do now? Yeah. Sorry, right. Six. Uh, can you buy a I five pack? No. You can buy five individuals. Why would you? Just buy the six. I don't know. There's got to be a reason. You only have... <laughs> I was going to say, you only have four people with you, but... You're yeah, gonna be like, you, have four, you, yeah. have, you have four <laughs> friends? Here's one beer. You're like, yeah. what the fuck's wrong with you, man? Yeah. You know my two-four? Um, this gets two bottle caps for me. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna get two and a half, but I think that's... I've got a no bit of nostalgia tied to it. Yeah, and clearly, I would have watched a sequel with just Esteban yelling, 
Oh my god, he's yeah, he's the best part of the movie. Yeah. He's like, ah, Zoro! Be the sissy man. <laughs> he's the best part of the movie, but yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, someone watch this and find out if it's offensive. The most offensive thing I was this... the, I didn't think it was the face, the face paint. Well, yes. And uh, obviously, all the, all the white people are trying to sound Hispanic. That's what I mean. Like, the but whole... in terms of like, that... I wasn't offended, but I could see people being like, whoa, there's not one yeah. Hispanic person in this movie. Fair enough. <laughs> and they're all playing Hispanic. Um, I would say the actual line of dialogue is Florinda says, calls Charlotte a puta. I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. nice. And yeah. she actually plays like a white woman in it. So yeah. like the, even that made it more funny for me. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly tame by today's standards. Like you'll get more offended at a Fairly Brothers movie. You get more offended by American Pie. That's offensive. Yeah, I know, because it's crude. Well, p- pie, pies matter. Zora yeah. the Game Blade. I had a better job than that. Wait, let's run that again. Say, give me the same setup. We won't cut it, but give me the same setup about American Pie. Uh, if you would be more offended by American Pie. Yeah, because Jason Biggs is ugly. Ah! <laughs> oh, I should have looked. Well, okay, give me one more. Well, the third one. No. And he wore what? Plum. He wore a fruit? No, Excellency. He was dressed entirely in plum. Everything matched. And he talked it differently from the first time he rubbed it. Yeah? He, he sounded like a... Boop. Excellency! I mean, Rob. I saw him. He was dressed in yellow like a big banana. Ah, uh-huh. I think he's trying to tell me something. First a plum, then a banana. I got it. Hey. Something terrible has happened. I know. Just tell me what he was. Green. Like a lamb. Like an avocado. Ah, uh-huh. two fruits and no vegetables. Actually, the avocado is a fruit, Excellency. I uh, know. You're right. Uh, two fruits, one vegetable. Excellency, what do we wear? Red. Red like an apple or red like a radish? Red like a rose. Aha, uh-huh. two fruits, one vegetable, and one flower. Alcalde, alcalde. He dresses like, like a salad. Or salada? Yes. Con tomato? And rabanitos and pepinos.